Yeah. <laughs> it's the new Red Green Show! And now here's the man who brings the outdoors indoors to your door. The man you adore coming through that door, Mr. Red Green! <laughs> Woo! Thank you, appreciate it very much. Well, this morning I was walking around downtown. Downtown? Where's downtown? We, have, we hardly have a town, let alone a downtown. Where's downtown? <laughs> Where the roads cross, Harold, okay? We've got a building on each corner. Around here, that's an urban core. <laughs> so anyway, I'm walking around downtown. Got the shock of my life. Oh, yeah, I meant to tell you, Murray installed a full-length mirror in front of his store. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about what was in the store, Harold. Had a satellite dish in there for the TV, and I'm thinking to myself, boy, you know, if we had one of those up at the lodge, we could watch outdoor shows from all over the world. Kind of compare our show to theirs. Mind you, I guess that'd be like comparing apples and oranges. Or apples and a lemon. <laughs> Sounds like sour grapes from a second banana to me. What do you think? <laughs> We have the usual animals, plus a four-legged one visiting up at the lodge. Ranger Gord is watching out for fire again. There's one there, Gord. Better report that. And this here, I really can't explain it. You're just going to have to stay and watch. So, Uncle Rand, I thought you said you'd never, ever, ever, never, never, ever buy a satellite dish for the lodge. I didn't buy one, Harold. I made one. Oh, no, not that patio umbrella that you lined with foil potato chip bags. <laughs> <laughs> No, Harold, that one uh, blew away one night, right in the middle of Baywatch. <laughs> no, no, we got a new one. This one's real solid. Made it out of the roof from the top of the corn silo over at Farmer Nash's place. Uh, the roof? Yeah. D did he give it to you? More of a finder's keeper's uh, unit. Uh... <laughs> we got a satellite dish. Oh, yeah, we got oh. a great satellite dish. Yeah. Imagine all the stations. Oh, yeah, we're already getting about a million stations, but uh, now we're going to put a motorized unit on there so that you can uh, change the, the aim, you know, from satellite to satellite without leaving the comfort of your TV room. Oh, yeah, wow, great. this is great. We can use, like, the satellite to scan the universe for signs of intelligent life. Oh, we're not interested in intelligent life. We want television. <laughs> Coming up later on, Bill's gonna try. Oh, Bill's gonna try a pogo stick. Bill is a man of action. That's what a pogo stick is. All action. I tell you something. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And sometimes some water. Okay, this is the big one for a free ice cream cone with any purchase of a scoop of ice cream from the House of Vanilla. All right. All right. You have 30 seconds to get Mr. Stevenson to say this word. 30 seconds, go. All right, Bob, uh, wedding. Divorce. <laughs> Wedlock. Headlock. Matrimony. Alimony. <laughs> now, now, Bob, think. You've had five ex-wives, mm -hmm. so you've experienced this five times. Sex? <laughs> Oh, there are so many things your head can do. It can see, think, feel, talk, and smell. Your head is the part of your body you should use the most because it does so many things so darn well. Use your head wisely, clean up, protect it, and you can never go wrong. But if you find yourself banging it against the wall for hours and hours on end, that's a pretty good chance you've been married a little bit too long. <laughs> you know, we get a lot of questions for Ranger Gord up here at Possible Lodge, and unfortunately, the only one I can repeat on television is uh, Ranger Gord. How many forest fires have you spotted from the tower here? Oh, well, Red, uh, do you mean just this year or all together? No, no, all together. All together? Yeah, all together, well, yeah. Let's see, uh... <laughs> Four, you can just round it off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> None, actually. <laughs> yeah. You want to know the secret in being an effective forest ranger? What's that? Coffee. Coffee. That's right. Wow. And I grind my own blend, Ranger Gourd Java. Wow. It consists of peach pits, acorns, and these coffee plant leaves. Oh, no, no, Gourd. I, uh, 
I believe that's poison ivy you got there. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, it works. It works like the Dickens. You know, one cup of this and I'm up scratching my lips all night. <laughs> Here, let me uh, mix you up a batch of Ranger Gourd Java, okay? Well, uh, I got the gas on kind of high, huh? Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Attention, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday! This is Firewatch Tower 13. Firewatch Tower 13, we've got a fire. Coordinates, um, where am I? I'm up in my tower here. Uh, send a water bomber right away with lots of people, okay? Uh, uh, fire's kind of out here. It's kind of, it's gone, it's done. It's done there. It's out. Yep. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> it's a good thing that I was uh, here to spot it and report it. And start it. <laughs> Up at the lodge, we turn accidents into opportunities, as most of our parents did. So this week on Handyman Corner, I'm starting with an accident. This is the kind of thing that can happen when you leave your car parked between two railroad tracks and both trains come along at the same time. <laughs> now I suppose we could collect up the pieces and put them back together again, but the problem there is... The front end is over in Halifax, and the back half's in Vancouver. At times like this, you wish you had a smaller country. So instead, I'm going to take this unit and turn it into something else. Now, what are the two favorite things that men love to do most? Hmm? All right, well, now, since this is a family show, although I'd certainly be frightened to meet that family, now we're going to restrict our two choices to driving a car and watching television. Now, what if we could combine those two? Hmm? Now, I'm not talking about just putting a television set into a car, I'm talking about somehow combining the driving experience with watching television. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of ingenuity and uh, this piece of garbage here and a piece of duct tape and uh, a major railroad accident, I'm gonna turn this dashboard into a television remote controller, a man-sized zapper. <laughs> Sound ingenious? Sound incredible? Sound impossible? Who cares, I'm not listening. <laughs> satellite dish. Let's start her up. <laughs> Boy, must have flooded it. <laughs> now, there we go. There we go. Here she comes. There she comes. There's the... Oh, yeah. And I can control the volume on the unit, which is with my radio knob here. <laughs> and when I want to change channels, I just turn the steering wheel. I can call this Turner Broadcasting. Of course, that's been taken. And the beauty is I don't have to use my turn signals. I don't use anyway, actually. <laughs> and I got my panel light dimmer there to control the brightness of the TV. <laughs> and if I should uh, spill some uh, stuff on there, maybe bits of pasta or any assorted meals or what have you onto the screen of the TV, I can clean that off because I got her all hooked up to my washer and wiper control. <laughs> all right, now you can just reach over to your glove compartment. Get out your TV guy. Well, you're browsing through that. I'll tell you something else. You know what's great? The cigarette lighter. You can use that to heat up your coffee. When you to... oh, there we go. Just like that. And the ashtray is a perfect spot to keep any of your favorite snacks. Look at that, eh? Look good. Oh, uh, smoky flavor. <laughs> and when there's nothing on TV, I just switch over to my VCR. Where I've got fast forward. <laughs> or I've got freeze frame. Oh, no, I'm not gonna watch this. this. This is my favorite show. Oh, here's another feature. I can block out whatever Harold's saying. Come on, hurry up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, so remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Oh. <laughs> I, like, I like this part. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna watch that again. Rewind. <laughs> Ranger Guard doesn't have his head in the clouds. He's got the clouds in his head. Stay tuned. A lot of you guys.
guys are asking me. Red, I'm 40 something, but am I really middle-aged? I'll tell you what, here's a few signs that'll let you know you may already have lined up for a ticket to Geezer City. <laughs> have you started putting screws into a glass jar? <laughs> talking about good screws. I mean old rusty bench screws. You know, with the bunged up slots on them? Because it gives you a chance to use your new label maker? Have you turned down a hot tub party with attractive naked people so you can stay around the house and putter? Has your underwear gotten all homely and threadbare because there's no chance anybody other than you, the wife, and the heart attack emergency unit are ever going to see you? telling you, just relax. You're a normal, virile male in the prime of life. Middle age is just a state of mind, and if you don't mention the state of mind, mind, I'll be happy to overlook yours. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. <laughs> well, with this satellite dish up and running there, we thought we'd motorize her with a couple of garage door you know, to kind of spin around this. But then I got the idea, why don't we use the garage doors, too, Mount to have everything kind of hidden away. Then when you want to watch TV, you push a button, she flips up, you know, and then the, all the satellite dishes kind of move around. And, and then you can flip her right back around when there's a storm coming or something, you know. Oh, that's something. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. You know what that's like? What? That's like that, that show, Thunderbirds. Oh, yeah. That's my most favorite show. All right. Yeah, yeah. Because well. when someone phones International Rescue, right, Mr. Tracy goes, Thunderbirds, go. And then, you know, <laughs> he walks like that. Like that, right? That's a show. Cool. That's a very good show. You know? Oh, you know what? Because then Brains, he, he's like my most favorite character in the whole show is Brains. He's great because he'll go, launch Thunderbirds, right? And then all of a sudden, these secret doors, they just open, right? And up comes this launch pad, and there's this, uh, this red one, right? It's the first one. And it goes, Phew! and it goes, it's gone, right? Because he's the first one. He was told to go, he goes, right? So then suddenly there's, it goes, Thunderbird, go. And the second one goes, and he's, he's like green, you know, like a, like a frog or Moose Thompson or something, right? So he goes, Phew! and he's gone too, right? And then Thunderbird 3, go. And then the sudden <laughs> doors open, where he goes, Thunderbird 3, he's out of there, right? I'll say, you know what happened? You know what happens? You know what happens? You know what happens? Doors close. Doors close. And all of a sudden, it just looks like an island. Like Gilligan's Island, which is my second most favorite show. <laughs> second most. It's so cool, right? It is. I like Marianne. I like Marianne. I do. I like Marianne. A lot of people like Ginger. I think she's shallow. I do. You know? She, she's on a desert island. Wow, well, she's thinking about us. Oh, how do I look? You know, like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about? I have no idea. <laughs> Hi, Ranger Gord again, way up here at Fire Watch Tower 13. You know, a lot of people ask me, do you ever get bored up here? Well, I say to them, hey, how can I ever get bored when I've got my imagination in so many different clouds? Like, look at that one. That one looks like Barbara Bain cutting the lawn. <laughs> hey, look at that one. That one looks like Raquel Welch sharpening her pencils. <laughs> oh, look at that one. That looks like one of the women from Gilligan's Island. <laughs> Oh, there's a woman smiling at me and waving. She just has a towel on. <laughs> OK, so let's say you're in real trouble. Doesn't matter what for. Never does. No. Uh, <laughs> but whatever the trouble is, uh, we have a few golden rules that all men follow to sort of help you ease the squeeze. Rules that men have followed for hundreds of years, and we're going to pass them on to you. Yeah. OK, first of all, don't argue back. It just, it just winds them all up. The more you let her blow it all off, the quicker you can get back to your normal routine. See, there's nothing that bugs a woman more than someone who disagrees with her. No, that brings us to rule number two. Always agree with her, no matter what she says. Yeah. You gotta look her straight in the eye and go, you know something, dear? You're absolutely right. <laughs> Most of the time, that'll completely disarm them. Oh, the only trick, though, is you gotta be humble for at least an hour afterwards. Otherwise, she'll realize that you're pulling her chain. <laughs> that brings us to rule number three. Never underestimate a woman, okay? A woman is the most sophisticated, clever, intuitive creature on the face of the earth. You, on the other hand, are just a man. <laughs> Tell you one thing, if you're talking safety, you are not talking to Buzz Sherwin. Hey, Buzz. Hey, Red Man! Woo! <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, you got a safety tip for us? Hey, two words, Red. Yeah. ATV. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The all-terrain vehicles. That's right, that's right. Now, I got one, so I know they are overpowered, they are skitterish, they are hard to stop. 
Talk about fun. <laughs> Whoa! So be careful, you can get injured. You mean from them tipping over easy or from falling off? No, no, it seems to be the brakes. They, they are just, like, totally useless when they're wet. So remember that, safety first. Well, maybe the brakes just need to be adjusted. Uh, do you have the owner's manual, Buzz? Yeah, it's in the compartment under the seat. Well, why don't you go get that and we'll see what it says. Okay. Well, I hooked up that satellite dish 36 hours ago and the guys haven't stopped watching TV. You know, correct? A uh, more average North American watches six hours of TV a day. You know that? Yeah, I heard that if we didn't watch that much TV, we'd have, like, time to earn six college degrees, maintain five hobbies, and be in peak physical condition. Wow, is that true? Where'd you hear that, Harold? I don't know, some show I was watching. <laughs> I mean, these guys haven't even taken a bathroom break. Junior Sink was down there hopping from one foot to the other, yelling, buy a bowel, buy a bowel. <laughs> That, that's by a vowel, Uncle Ray. They're, they're watching Wheel of Fortune. No, they're watching ER. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll get them out of the TV room. Don't you worry. All right, all right. Yeah, I'll tell you what you can do. Smack them on the head with that if you have to. A, a New York City phone book? No, no, that's the satellite TV guide. <laughs> Look at all this mindless yeah. stuff. Look at that, huh? Yeah. Boy, Thunderbirds! Thunderbirds! <laughs> Yeah, channel 562. That's a, I've only seen this one five times. It's a good The safety smart handyman knows you should always start each new project with a clean workspace. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Today we got an adventure with Bill for all of you teenagers who should be studying physics instead of physiques. We're gonna kind of concentrate on one of Newton's laws here, and I don't mean the one with the fig in it. This is the one that says for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. I got the pogo stick there, and uh, Bill's adding energy, so I'm gonna try to subtract a little bit. Jump wow. it down on the pogo stick. There he compresses the... Oh, 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 oh. Uh, all right, fine. Now, you see, that wouldn't have gone nearly as far if he hadn't put as much energy into the focus. That's a, that's a valuable lesson. About 80 bucks, I think it was. <laughs> oh, Bill's got an idea. Oh, boy. Is that good news? I'm thinking probably not. <laughs> this is the TV antenna tower that we no longer need now that we've got the satellite dish. So Bill's thinking, hey, wait a minute. Maybe I can just use this for a project. <laughs> Bill's fun to watch, isn't he? What, what? Oh, look out, look out, look out. Window. There's the action. <laughs> There's the reaction. Hmm. Appreciate that, Bill. And recycle the air. Oh, yeah, no, it's fine. You don't care. It's not your truck. <laughs> anyway, he's just going to use the tower part. Like at this point, we've kind of made a commitment. So we... What are we doing there? And, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, just walking around. You should warn a person when you put <laughs> something down. Took me a while to catch my breath. I was okay. I should have kept my eye on Bill, I guess. <laughs> we'll be back to finish that when I regain consciousness. Stay tuned. Well, 37 hours and counting since I hooked up the satellite dish. Not one person who's wandered into that TV room has come out alive. I haven't seen that many slack-jawed, dull-eyed, blank expressions since my grade 10 class picture. It's so quiet in here, the mice are coming out of the walls and just joining us. It's, just, it's too quiet. I hate it. Way, way too quiet. <laughs> You here to join the lodge? Hey, you here to join the lodge because we can... Oh, the TV room? Yeah, it's that way. <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm okay. I'm okay, Red. Red, you okay, man? Oh. You okay? Oh. Jeez, Buzz. If you're gonna fly like that, get doors on the plane. Doors, yeah, doors. <laughs> Welcome to the expert portion of the show. And on this week's expert portion of the show, we have the experts, my Uncle Red and his good friend, Dougie Franklin. <laughs> okay. Our first letter goes as follows. Uh, dear experts, uh -huh. recently, <laughs> recently my girlfriend and I were out cruising in my Camaro on our way to a street race when she pulled her scarf off my rearview mirror and told me it was all over between us. <laughs> all right. The next night, next night I saw her on the back of some guy's motorcycle. How can I win back the girl of my dreams bereft in Boston? Well, I tell you, feller, I think if you want her back, this is what you gotta do. You gotta get your vehicle into the shop, you gotta get your rings done, and your headers chrome. <laughs> 
what you're saying is this romance just needs a little tune-up. Well, yeah. In a matter of words, yeah, a way of speaking, I would say that romance, Red, she's like your internal combustion engine. <laughs> if you want her to run smooth, you gotta maintain your spark. <laughs> now, my advice to bereft is check your timing, gap your plugs, and you may not need that jump start. <laughs> I think it's very flattering. People won't want their love life compared to a slant six. <laughs> it's an accurate comparison, though, and I think Bereff has just got to hope that the problem is only the spark, because if it ain't the spark, then it's the gas. We all know how quickly you can kill a romance when you are backfiring down lover's lane. Meanwhile, back at the science lesson, I got an ice pack on my head there, and uh, Bill's got a drain pipe, and he's got the thing, he's got a bungee. Uh, <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the science lesson, I have two ice packs, and Bill has cut the uh, tower down, he's got a drain pipe, he's got bungee cords, and he's, what he's done is, what has he done? Oh my gosh, he's made a gigundo pogo stick. Holy mackerel. You know, you gotta hand it to him. Oh. <laughs> Bill drives by ear. <laughs> well, the reason he brought the van in, which I wish he had explained to me earlier, is he's gonna jump up on top of her there so that he has a higher mounting. And then if the young people are listening to this, uh, you should, you should, this is something you should pay attention to because you see you're farther from the center of the earth. And I believe the gravity pulls down on you with some more gravity. And I'm to prop that up to him. And here's the action he's gonna take by stepping on that. And here's the reaction I'm gonna take by getting the heck out of the way. And there he goes, look at that. The world's largest pogo stick. Boingy, boingy, boingy. There we go. Oh, watch out, Bill. It's a big hill, big Oh, 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 down she comes. Look at that reaction. Oh, my golly. Okay. <laughs> Class is dismissed. <laughs> Uncle Ray! Uncle Ray! Something's wrong with the satellite feed. We're not getting a good picture. Uncle Ray! Oh, really, Harold? So, oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I was gone. How long was I? I was yeah. gone, like half an hour, huh? Twelve and a half hours, Harold. <laughs> oh, no way. Oh, no, yes way. No way, I yes just know, because yes. I just watched like that one rerun of Banachek. Uh -huh. And then there was a little bit of the car race, oh. you know, and, and then I watched Best of Celebrity Circus, yeah. you know, and then there was, the, there was a, so those few game shows in there and some right. and music videos, and then there's those people line dancing. Oh. And we watched that infomercial about the sunglasses, you see, watch, and then Model Zinc was on. And what year is it now? <laughs> Oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that? I think there's an episode of Lassie starting. Harold, that's a call to the meeting. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, because it, you know, it sounded like Star Trek or, or Next Generation. Voyager, can we Voyager? Harold, it's the meeting. Get down there right now. It's the meeting. Yeah? <laughs> so if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. I am sick to death of television. I'm going to stop at the video store and get a movie. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Be out myself and Harold and the whole gang up here, Possum Lodge. Keep your stick on the ice.